The next method we're going to write is remove. There's two removes, and I'm going to go into my link list. I'm going to double click on these removes. One of them takes an object, and this one looks through the list for the object, and the other one takes an integer index, and it removes the object at that index. So I'm going to cut, cut this, and I'm just moving all the methods that we're working on near the top. <clears throat> this I'm going to put below the ads. So what exactly does this do? Right click on the method itself and go navigate, go to super implementation. This will get us into the interface. And remember above the method is the description of what it does. Removes an element to specify a position in the list. Ships any subsequent elements to the left. Uh, we're going to, we won't actually have to shift. You'll see the way we're implementing it that we're just going to move around to arrows, kind of like we did with add, but we're not going to make a new node. We're going to shift some arrow or arrows around so that one of them basically disappears. And it returns, is important, the element that was removed from the list. So it's not returning the node, it's returning the node's data that we're removing. Okay, so it takes the index, the element to be removed, returns the element previously at the specified position. Uh, we're going to implement it, so we won't have that. Uh, but, of course, anything that takes an index, the index could be bad, could be negative or too big. When we were doing the add, it was okay for the index to equal size on the add. I was using an example with four, size is four. When we added that position four, you would just add a new node at the end past the one at index three. So it was okay to add at the same index of size. So here our size is four. So it's okay to add at index four, but let's think about removing at index four. Well, this is the last element to remove and it's at index three. So you cannot remove at index four or at index size. And that's just a little bit different than the other one because it was with the add, it was okay to equal size. But now if index equals size, that's not okay. And we would throw the index out of bounds exception. All right, so that's a brief description. Let's go ahead and implement it. <clears throat> so we're going to, of course, delete the uh, throw exception. All right, so let's do the initial uh, index equals zero case first. So if our index is zero, that means we're going to remove the initial element. And we might as well just do the uh, minus minus size here. All right, how do we do this? So we're gonna go back to this. We're only working on index zero right now. So I wanna remove oatmeal. I'm gonna use exact same example as we were working with before, the same four elements. I wanna remove oatmeal. How do I do that? Well, let's think about this. You might be thinking, ah, oh, well, we should be deleting this node. Uh, but if we actually deleted it, and it stopped existing, head would point nowhere, and we'd have uh, basically a uh, link list with no nodes in it. So we want to modify where this points, and all we need to do is just change it so that it points to strawberries. Once we do that, there's nothing pointing to the initial element anymore, and this will be garbage collected. Now you might be thinking, well, what about that arrow? Well, when it gets garbage collected, that arrow is going to disappear. Everything here is going to go away. So all we need to do is move the head forward one. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do we do that? So we're going to change head. So head equals, how do we advance it? Well, let's think about how we advanced nodes before. Here we go. Current equals current next. That's how to advance. So we're going to do head equals head next. And 
and we decrease size. Now remember, we have to return something, but we have a problem. We have to return head.data. All right. Oops, it probably needs a second equal sign. All right, so let's test this out. It's only going to work with index is zero. Well, we only have a chance of it working if index is zero. So let's go to the test. <clears throat> Instead of doing add, of course, we're going to do remove. Uh, remove takes an index only. It's going to return uh, for us a string. Let's see, I don't really need this initial value. So I'm just going to set element equal to whatever uh, this returns. Let's see, variable types. So I think we can cast like that. Okay. And of course, you better go remove. It only has an index, and it does have a return value. And we'll put that right in here. And then we'll see the result list right here. So let's give it a run. So we had four elements, oatmeal, strawberries, burger, coleslaw, removed at one, oatmeal. Ah, it's only gonna work at index zero. We didn't code anything for any other index values. Of course we will work with other values later, but we better put it in the index that we actually have code for. Okay, look at that. Index zero has been removed, so oatmeal's disappeared, but oh, somebody can't spell. But strawberries are not what was removed. So what happened here? We advanced head, and then after we advanced it, we returned the head data. We have to get this head data before we move head to the second one. So let's go ahead and we'll make a node. We're gonna return it, so great idea to call results. Uh, something you're gonna return. Here we're going to, I need to save the head.data before we advance, yeah. All right, so we have a choice here. Result I made as a node. So technically we're not returning result, we're returning results.data. Ah. If, all right, so we'll just throw this return right inside here. Well, I'm just going to give it initial value. So it'll return null unless we use zero. Okay, so let's run this. Hopefully this will capture the uh, oatmeal data and then return that. There we go. We got oatmeal, the right one removed, and this is the right result. Excellent. So that's zero. Let's look at the add really quickly, the one with the index. So we treat it index zero separately. Uh, our code looks a little different, but basically similar. Here's what we did for add when it index was one or more. So let's think about this. We grabbed the previous node Uh, 
But before we also returned, so let's just go ahead and uh, put that return inside the if. Okay, so previous node equals. Let's go with index one next. So how are we going to delete that node? Let's think about this. What we really need to do is change that arrow to point one ahead. How do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is set previous node to be the one before the node we want to remove. So that's why we're going to use this previous node equals our get previous node from before. That'll point to the node before the one we want to remove. And what do we do after that? So previous nodes pointing here, and then we want to set previous nodes next to be the one after. So that's going to look a little tricky. So we have previous node dot next equals. So that's how we set that arrow. But what does it need to equal? It needs to go ahead. of where it is. So now we have previous node next equals previous node next to next. And you can totally parenthesize to enforce order of operations like this. So it'll, this is the previous nodes next, and then this is the one after it. All right, what else do we need to do? Well, we saw before, I have to grab the, somewhere in a result. So result equals, I think we want to grab previous node next. So this will be the, not the previous node, but the actual one we're removing because I set result equal to previous node dot next. Oh, come on. So it's previous node, we're removing strawberries. Previous node points to oatmeal, but previous node next will be strawberries. And that's the data we're going to want to return. So result equals previous node next, and then return result dot data. All right, let's give it a shot. I don't think I changed the testing code. Sure didn't. All right. I'll just quit it. Yes, I do. Run. And that's why I didn't hard code in the index value, because if I put a one here and then a one here, I'd have to change it in multiple places. Now I only have to change index in one place, and it should adjust the print statement and the remove. All right, look at that. Remove strawberries, and we have everything without strawberries in it. Okay, so one was good. I'm going to try, you could probably skip two, but I'm going to do it just to be safe. Uh, three is the last one that's valid, because after three, there's not a index four node. So three is the last one that should actually remove. Of course, we're going to test the ones that are invalid. All right, where are we? Remove burger, burger's gone, and oatmeal, strawberries, coleslaw. All right, index three, here we go. This one should still remove, but in this case, it'll be the last. So coleslaw is removed, and oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. So these are all the valid ones. While we're at the larger index values, let's go with the first invalid one. Now, what are we anticipating? This is too big, so there's nothing to remove. And looking at the interface, 
out of bounds when index is, of course, greater than size. But even if index equals size, we need to see the index out of bounds exception. And you might be thinking, well, we're not throwing exception in any of the code here. But remember, get previous node can throw an exception for certain index values. Because I, well, we'll see what happens here. I have a feeling it's going to not give us the index out of bounds exception. It's gonna be no pointer exception. We'll see. All right, where are we? All right, no pointer exception. What happens? Well, if you go too far, you will be trying to treat this as if it was a node. So you might be trying to access the data or the next, and we'll go look exactly what we were trying to access, but we went too far. And there's a couple ways to deal with this. So this first line I clicked on is the actual line of our code that caused it. Now in this line, it could have been previous node.next that triggered it, but it's probably previous node.next.next .next that triggered it. There's a couple ways to deal with this. Let's see, I could put an if statement and it would be if index equals size, then we want to uh, throw an index out of bounds exception. So that'd be one way to do it. Uh, let's go ahead and test five and maybe even six. Eventually the index is going to be big enough that it will throw an index out of bounds exception. I just want to see if it's going to throw a five or a four. So hopefully we'll see the index out of bounds here. Index out of bounds, there we go. All right, so it works. It throws the right exception with the right index value when index is one larger than the size. But when index equals size, we get a different exception. So this is a great time to talk about catching exceptions. So it doesn't work when index is four, which is size. I think it'll work, I didn't try six, seven, eight, nine, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work for all the bigger ones. All right, what exception, we did get an exception, but it's not the one we were supposed to have. Boom, null pointer exception. So I'm copying that. We know exactly a line that triggered it was this one. So I'm gonna wrap this in a try catch. So this is the line of code we're gonna try. And this has to be paired with a catch. Now this catch, you need to put an exception in here. The exception I want to look for is a null pointer exception, and I'll just call it E. What do we wanna do if there's a null pointer exception? We're gonna do something a little weird. We're gonna throw another exception. And this is the index out of bounds exception. Which I'm worried I'll spell wrong. Index out of bounds. Uh, well, we have to go new. Bounds exception, we can put a string in here. Uh, let's see, I want it to match the one we threw for add. Or not add, but the one we threw here. All right, we don't need some of this stuff here. Index equals. So that'll put the index value in there and should be between zero and size. Now this should be between zero and size minus one. All 
All right, let's run this. Remember, I didn't change the test, so it should we're still testing four. And we already saw that right here, this line of code is what caused, and you can see it right here. Now, I want to warn you, if you click on these now, the line number 127 was a line number from before I edited any code. So if I click on 127 now, it's going to take us to line 127. Now, I know the highlighted code is what actually caused the exception, the null pointer exception. But if I click on this, it's going to go to 127, which if you remember what the code was before, the code was this was right on line 127. So just be aware of that. If you start editing your file after uh, you've run it, these will refer to the line numbers on the version of the code that was run, not on the version of the code that's on the screen at that moment. All right, so hopefully we catch that null pointer exception. So the way this try catch works, it tries to run this. If it can't, or if it, exception occurs instead of continuing down here if exception occurs well and we named it if this exception occurs then this line of code gets executed if there's no exception if this worked just fine then it skips the catch and just goes down to the following line This try catch is also how we're going to test the exceptions without actually bringing our code to a screeching halt. Okay, look at that. We got index out of bounds exception, index equals four, and should be between zero and size minus one, which is four. B maybe a little uh, more specific. This size should be size minus one. What in the world's happening here? Bad operand types. Well, what the, I'm subtracting two numbers. Well, think about what's actually happening. Before it subtracts, it's gonna concatenate size and a string. So what I have highlighted will turn into a string and strings, there is no subtraction of strings. So I wanna subtract one before the string concatenation occurs. And so I have to force it with parentheses to subtract one first. Now it should say size minus one is three. All right, what we still haven't tested is negative one for the index. All right, perfect, index out of bounds. Index is four and should be between zero and size minus one, which is three. Perfect. All right, we're just gonna go test, negative one. Let's see what we get. This may be off by one. The I think we'll, we'll see the correct exception, but I think the string inside the exception Oh, okay, look at that. So we saw index out of bounds exception. That's what I wanted to see because the index was bad. It's negative one and it should be between zero and size, which is four. Now, this, this was created when we did the add or not. Well, it was the get previous node. Let's not worry too much about what's printed out. This is good enough. All right, so that's remove. I'll talk with the index. I'll talk about the other remove next.